or perhaps the same powers that were working in the days of Benjamin Franklin have never really ceased to function. Is it just a coincidence that the war on terror has provided the opportunity to spread democracy to all the world? And this is what people don't understand, is, is our president talks about how we want to bring democracy to all these countries of the world. Well, why doesn't he want to bring a republic to these countries? We were a republic. We were never a democracy. It is only the people from the mystery religions and the secret societies who are pushing this idea of world democracy or this combination of enlightened nations, enlightened democracies to rule the world. As incredible as it may seem, there are really people who believe that. They're working full-time to accomplish that goal. And until you understand that they are the primary force behind the wars of this last century and World War III, which we are entering into today, unless they understand that the whole idea is uh, to create this reestablishment of what they believe is lost Atlantis, this wonderful utopian society that they believe existed uh, eons ago. Anybody who studied the history of America knows we were not established as a democracy. Our founding fathers didn't believe in democracy. They wanted a republic, a government of law, not uh, the de democracy, which is what the secret societies have been working for for well over 3,000 years. Could this be the secret behind what's happening in the world today? And was this the underlying motive in the war for American independence? To wrestle the new world from the power of the old, that it might in time be used to bring forth the great Atlantean plan envisioned by Sir Francis Bacon. Benjamin Franklin certainly knew the works of Francis Bacon and all the ethics and things that he was uh, trying to establish. Bacon was a man that Benjamin Franklin had much in common with. Both men were the leading scientists of their time. Both men were involved in printing, and both men published works that helped to transform the people of their generation. Both men developed their own system of ciphers and secret codes, which they used for intelligence purposes during wartime. And both men were deeply involved in the Masonic and Rosicrucian movements of their day. Franklin was a member of Masonic and secret orders in America, in England, and in France, the three countries involved in the American Revolution. But some researchers argue that his influence in France truly demonstrates his loyalty to a plan that looked beyond America to a global revolution. He was the master of the uh, uh, Lodge of the Nine Sisters, Nerchoir, the Lodge of the Nine Sisters right in Paris, and that's where the revolution started, incidentally. So he was Lodge Master there every time he visited the place. He, as so many young people, very intelligent people, really believed that man could create a better society without being totally reliant upon God. And, of course, we know that he eventually he went to France, and he was when he was in France as the American ambassador to France, uh, he was instrumental in pushing these ideas that led to the French Revolution. Franklin went to France to convince King Louis XVI to finance the American Revolution. But in the process, Franklin was preaching radical ideas that would later on inspire the French to overthrow Louis, the very monarch who had helped to pay for the founding of America. Americans desperately needed money to fight the War of Independence because, according to Franklin, England had ruined their economy to keep America from becoming too prosperous. When he was ambassador to England, um, the Bank of England said, how come America, the, the representatives of the Bank of England said, how come America is getting so rich? And Franklin said in his autobiography, recounts the story he said well that's easy in America we create our own money and we owe no interest to pay to no one 
so the Bank of England said, oh, that's very interesting. So they immediately had passed through Parliament the Currency Act of 1764. And what did the Currency Act do? It outlawed uh, the creation of America's own money and made um, put America on the gold standard, made Americans pay their taxes in gold or silver coin, which of course was very scarce in the American colonies in those days. So what was the result? It, it immediately plunged America into a deep depression. Franklin says that this, this depression, and uh, uh, everyone in America was well aware of what the depression, who caused the depression, why it was caused, just because England outlawed America just simply printing its own money, and that it was this uh, Currency Act of 1764 that was really the root cause of the American Revolution, because it caused uh, so much unemployment and uh, uh, a terrible ec economic upheaval. And Franklin's quote is, we could have endured a little tax on tea and other matters, but it was England's taking away our ability to create our own currency that was really the root cause of the revolution. And so King Louis supported the American cause through financial aid and the use of troops. But some years later, many of the French soldiers who fought for America would return to France to fight the French Revolution. Among their leaders would be an American hero, the Marquis de Lafayette, who served alongside George Washington. Lafayette was also a Freemason and close acquaintance of Benjamin Franklin, the man who seemed to be the friend of nearly all the revolutionaries of the day. It was Benjamin Franklin who initiated Voltaire himself uh, in 1778. He could then brag and say, oh, Voltaire was a Mason. Ooh, people would say, if it's good enough for him, it must be good enough for me. I don't know what it's all about, but it sounds like a good thing. While the writings of Voltaire inspired the French revolutionaries, Americans were compelled by another of Franklin's close friends, Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine was a member of the Lunar Society. Benjamin okay. Franklin would go and meet with them, yeah. Anyway, he recognized in Thomas Paine that the fellow was, um, he was pretty good at writing. And so he brought him back with him to Philadelphia. And he wrote the pamphlets, the pamphlets that started the revolution in America. It was a little booklet called Common Sense. Thomas Paine wrote that. And it was kind of um, inciting people to war against King George III. With the help of Paine and his fellow Masons, Franklin worked to create the revolutionary mentality among the colonies. Yes, Franklin developed the concept of the virtuous revolution. The thought of revolting against a monarch uh, amongst European people was absolutely anathema. It went totally against the European mindset of the divine right of kings, where uh, government is of God, kings are appointed by God, and so the virtuous revolution was something really different. But not all Masons went along with Franklin's ideas, like the man known as the great American traitor, Benedict Arnold, also a Mason who chose to side with the British during the war. Nevertheless, for good or for ill, Masonry was clearly at the helm of the War of Independence. It seems ironic, however, that American Masonry today owes its allegiance to the very country it rebelled against. Modern Masons trace their official beginning to the United Grand Lodge of England, founded in 1717. The official start of modern masonry is in 1717 in the Apple Tree Tavern in London, where the first Grand Lodge of England was convened. And that's called the Mother Lodge, because essentially all English-speaking lodges precipitate out of that. And for example, all American lodges, all the different Grand Lodges of the different states, all ultimately owe their allegiance and their warrant to the Grand Lodge of England. Yet prior to the formation of the Grand Lodge, the seeds of modern masonry had already been sown through the work of Francis Bacon. Francis Bacon established the Masonic organization, that, that whole body that was established by Francis Bacon. The uh, ethical programs that were inherent within that, he was responsible for all those. His philosophy, his ethics, his literature that he was responsible for would certainly be known to Benjamin Franklin. Was Franklin following Bacon's plan? 
Was it mere coincidence that he was a chief catalyst in the launching of the American Revolution? Or that his influence would also bring about the revolution in France? Masonic philosophers